G'day and welcome to today's episode of Wicked Machine Works. I'm here with Nelson Hartley and we're here to talk about not this motor but motors in general and well, the research and development that you do. Yeah, yeah, we're, in, we're an engine shop, um, development shop, machinist, manufacturing. Facility. A lot of Speedway engines? Lots of Speedway engines. Yeah. Speedway is the most popular form of Motorsport, um, New motorsport um, accessible. That might, that might not be quite true, but it's the the biggest um, it's the biggest category where we have strict engine rules, and yep. everyone's um, you know got to build engines within that. So as opposed to drifting, where we can just put anything in a car, and Speedway there's 300 super stocks yes. in New Zealand. They've all got to fit a strong set of rules. Hence why we build a lot of super stock engines. So if all of a sudden there was um, more jet boats racing than anything else, yeah. um, not because we would go chasing that work, we would end up doing a lot of that because that's just how it works. That's it's, yeah, it's not that we're going, going where the money's at, we're just going where the competition's at because yeah. that's what we're good at. We're good at um, solving problems and yeah. that problem is how do we go faster. Now speaking of solving problems, uh, I'll cut in some footage of when we were at the drifting with Jaron. You were solving injectors at that point, weren't you? Uh, yes, it turns out that um, rubber dust and fuel filters yeah, and, and air filters over the course of um, two seasons don't really mix that well. No, they don't. Um, not saying our maintenance was poor because by no that was by no means the case. It was just stored with the eighty five, wasn't it? Um, yeah, a little bit of petrol. I think a bit of fuel line degradation. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. rubber dust that was uh, stuck to the end of the injectors. But um, when you're cleaning out twelve injectors, it makes for a lot of work. Yeah, it took a bit of time, but we had spares in stock, so we, mm. we cleaned the filters out, put new injectors in, and it went like gangbusters. I mean, it was um, actually probably pretty lucky. Uh, yeah. The way we've designed that engine, like, it's really high compression, medium boost. Yeah, what's the compression? Um, when I say really high, it's mildly high for the kind of engine, for a turbo engine. It's 12.5 to 1 um, static compression. So that's a lot for a uh, turbo. To, to me, it's not. No, like, we, but to your average... Every everyday kind of person, someone who's yeah. got a sloppy V8. Oh well, yeah, so that <clears> engine <throat> like it, it survived that, it leaned out and it didn't torture a hole in the piston. And Which some, is amazing. Put some clean injectors in and off it went again, doing more skits. Uh, yes, I do own a VH41. I apologise, I'm sorry. Oh, they're good motors. <laughs> <laughs> but the VK56 is the more interesting platform really, isn't it? Yeah, and like you do a lot of stuff. We do a lot of stuff with an SMV. I guess we've got a bit of a reputation as being uh, Nissan developers, not because we have any affiliation. Like, no. like I'm not a um, I'm not a fanboy in any way. Like I, I, I don't care for brands like yep. um, Nissan, Toyota. Well, Porsche. there's a Toyota on the dyno there at the moment. Yep, there. Um, we the way we look at an engine is, um, we have a problem and we want to solve it. That problem is take Speedway for example. We need um, a V8 because the V8 is the best platform. Yep. Um, it needs to be. Four litre, yeah, under right. ten to one compression, run carburetor. Oh, and the other rules are it has to be an OEM block and the matching heads, so we can't make our own blocks or heads for that. You can't Frankenstein something yet. No, which we do for other forms of motorsport. Yeah, but for that, which is good, it keeps the cost down a lot. Worse. And the Nissan V8, from the VH41 through to the new VK56, is probably one of the most over-engineered OEM V8s I've ever seen. Like it's yeah. like the VH41, like you've got. Uh, we used those for a lot of years because there was nothing that even came close as far as strength around that four litre mark. And man, they're over engineered. Like I mean, I've, that, I've limited batched mine a lot. Yeah, and, and it's as a standard engine. And it still goes. Mm. Still goes as a standard engine. Like, I've always sort of joked that if we were to design and cast our own block, um, which we do design our own block sometimes, yep. for that size engine, it would be similar to that. It would not be that much different. Right. So, like, why use any, why we just go and buy those for the records and, yeah. and resurrect them. The VK56 is another step again. Yeah. Like the engine that we um, did for the... In case we have to edit this, Nelson's made a street VK56 that's 5 to 600 horsepower for a person or persons. Yeah. And... That's not what you'd normally do with the engine. You'd normally speedway the engine, which is far or jet, further. Or jet sprint or yeah. circuit car. You know, we've got them pumping out a couple of thousand horsepower with turbos on them. Um, yeah. Or like the, the super, some specs about the super stock one. That's, um, so we take a 5.6 litre motor. We bore it out bigger. So we actually yeah. go bigger in this bore than standard. We make our own crankshaft. Like we, we 
make our own crank shaft. It's not something we can buy something oh, really? and get it back to four litre, because those are the rules, maximum four litre. And 10 to one compression, so really low on a carburetor, and we're pulling 10,000 RPM. Actually, we've gone over 10,000 RPM, but there's just no need. Now, outside I saw you have a CNC machine. We do have a CNC machine. And I know you make a lot of CNC parts. We do make a lot of CNC machine parts. And so yes. You've got some things here, can you There's show just us? There's some stuff on the bench. Um, that's a... Rotary? That's a billet intake for a rotary. Um, rotary. It's actually a scrap one, because I... Like, it was a, a bit of a prototype, just to see how it would fit. I think I put two bolt holes in the wrong spot. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's just sitting around on the bench. But you've um, got, yeah, these machine manifolds for, uh, you've got the Toyotas and for the yeah, so and everything. Yeah, we, so we will try and find one that you can cut to, or you yep. can grab some photos off Instagram. Whenever we make something really cool, that it is gone out the door before I get a chance to have it sitting on the shelf and show people when they walk in. Right. Um, or actually, there's a billet cylinder head out there as well that you can do some cuts off, which is a cool piece. But, yeah, um, that was the big block cylinder head, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. but um, we make a lot of stuff from billet. Uh, I like it, it's cool. And then the combination of it, you've got yeah, so your individual throttle body with trumpets. So this is a, a throttle body. We could just buy them, but then they wouldn't be our own part for yep. our own purpose. We've gone to a lot of effort to keep it light. It's got a nice taper on them. Now, something that you might not notice by looking at this is that actually the trumpet here is actually 3D printed. Yep, that's definitely 3D printed. So you can immerse this in alcohol and metal. We, we use a lot of different polymers, yeah. but uh, just to make it quite clear, it's not hobby grade. 3D printing. No, stuff. this is expensive. Expensive. Um, like filament. Some some of the plastics we're using are like upwards of a thousand dollars a kg. So I try not to waste them too much. No. But man, are they strong! Like as strong per gram as aluminium, like billet aluminium. When designed correctly, like it's not a. Um, we made that out of billet. Let's make it out of plastic. Like it doesn't yeah. work for everything. But there's certain parts that lend themselves very well to 3D printing, and when done right with the right setup. Um, it can actually be very time efficient. So, so a part like that, that's actually an intake manifold. Like, yeah. You feel it, it's not very heavy. Uh, it's extremely strong. Like that plastic is... And this is quite modular as well. Yeah, I shouldn't actually call it plastic because it's not just plastic. Like that's a polymer that's reinforced with carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, it's good, it's stable to about 260 degrees C, which is pretty hot. It's hot. I mean, an intake manifold would never really get that hot. No, it doesn't. So there's some other things that are cool about it. It's more chemical resistant than most metals. It's actually more time efficient to print that, yeah. to design it right for printing, yep. and have the right process in place, than it is to make it out of billet. Because to do it out of billet, I need to be machining probably 10 at a time. Yeah, to make it cost effective. To make it cost effective, well, it might take three years to sell 10 of those because it's not a common engine. If you want to find out more about uh, Nelson and your business, check out the website. Yeah, so um, Instagram and Facebook have got lots of content on them. That's where you keep interesting things happening. Yeah, showing, yep, yep. the engines. Um, yep. the, our web page is now live, but there's not a lot on there. Yep. Um, you helped me get that going, yes. which was quite nice. because uh, One of my skills and web and stuff, but yes. you'll have, in the future, there'll be parts that come available, Yes. and they will be sold there. Uh, thank you very much, Nelson. No, no um, problem. Like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, buttons here, here, something. here, something. And uh, we'll catch up with Nelson again in about four weeks' time. See you in the next video. Peace.